about eight years ago, there was a stock trader who wanted to switch his career to software engineering because of thousands of dollars that he was making in profits was not giving him fulfillment in life. So he joined the famous CS50 course taught by David Mellon at Harvard and that was the first time he came across this programming tutorial called Scratch where he wrote code for the first time and built a game called Dodge the Ball and here is how this game looked like. I know you would be confused as to how flyweight pattern and this scratch game have to do with each other or this day stock trader. But just stay with me for one minute and I promise all of this is going to converge. The trader built this game and was very happy playing this game crossing one level after the other. But as the number of levels increased, the number of balls also increased and the game eventually slowed down. Little did he knew that he could have used flyweight pattern to optimize this game. So, there it is. Flyweight pattern is an optimization pattern. See, I told you it will all converge. Now, let's get into the details of flyweight pattern. And yeah, about that trader, I will tell you what happened to his career towards the end of the video. Flyweight pattern, being a structural pattern, is actually an optimization pattern. And the game that we just looked at slowed down because of the increased number of balls it started using a lot of RAM and hence using flyweight pattern could have solved that. How flyweight pattern would have solved that? Because it is used to optimize the RAM usage by a lot of objects which share some immutable state. Some examples of flyweight pattern or some examples where flyweight pattern can be applied are car games with a lot of repeating objects or trees etc or e-commerce app listing and selling thousands of items. Now, let's get to see at the code level that what happens in a flyweight pattern. So here it goes. In the above dodgeball example game, you have seen that there was a ball object and it has properties like color, images, coordinates x, y, radius of the ball and so on. The functions for this class would be to draw the ball on the canvas. The properties which would not change with more number of balls or the more number of instances of the balls are color or image. The properties that would change are coordinates or radius. These properties which do not change are called intrinsic attributes. However, the properties which do change with different initialization are called extrinsic attributes. Every time a new object is initialized for this class, these properties remain same. But the extrinsic properties over here do change. Every time a ball object is initialized, some memory is needed for that object during runtime including intrinsic and extrinsic properties. Approximately 504 KBs of memory is required for one object. And when we get to a case where we have to have hundreds or thousands of these objects, you can see how the memory increases or the memory usage increases. In reality, we can extract out these immutable properties or intrinsic properties of these objects like color and sprite in a separate object and we can reuse these abstracted out objects all we have to find out a way is to store them and cache them somewhere in the application. And hence, we would be able to save a lot of memory. You would wonder that if we are going to save a lot of memory, are we going to create less number of objects? No, the number of objects is still remain the same, except the data which takes a lot of memory and is common among all the objects is extracted out. Now the question is, the extracted out data, where do we save that data or where do we save that object? We need to have that storage somewhere in the application so that we can access it during the runtime. So we cache that intrinsic data using a factory pattern and those objects that we cache using a factory pattern are actually known as flyweights. Here is a visual representation of how the objects and the memory usage would look like before optimization and here how the objects are going to look like after the optimization. The class diagram for this pattern can be a bit tricky, but let's try to take a dig at it. You would use a factory pattern to cache all the flyweight objects in an array. Your flyweight object is going to have intrinsic and extrinsic properties. The flyweight factory is going to cache the objects. If that object has already been created, it will return that same object. And the client which is using this code will use the extrinsic properties to further enhance that object and use it in implementation. Let's try to look at concrete code to understand this. This is the ball object that we had been talking about. It has all these properties that we have just seen. What we have done here is that we have abstracted out color and image URL and made it a part of the constructor. The other properties have their setters and a draw function for this ball. 
but color and image url do not have external setter functions this is our main client code which is going to use the flyweight factory and the flyweight pattern so as you can see here that we have some different colors using which we can initialize different color balls we have created a map using which which color ball has a respective image url now as you can see here in this particular piece of code we are trying to get the color the respective image and we are trying to use a ball factory to get the ball object now let's try to go to the ball factory class and see what's happening there in the ball factory class as you can see that we are getting the color and url and on the basis of these two properties we are checking if we have something in our cache if we don't we are creating a ball object using those two properties and we are inserting it in our hash map or cache for that matter and then returning it in case we already have that object we will just return it from the cache i have also added this code in the description so you can refer it at ease so that was all about flyweight pattern now let's go through some pros and cons the obvious pro of this particular pattern that it is an optimization pattern and it's very useful to save the resources some cons would include that there is a factory pattern and there is a flyweight weight pattern so there is a pattern inside a pattern and hence it can be complex to understand sometimes it can also be a trap for premature optimization so please make sure that you don't fall in this trap and you only use it when it is absolutely necessary if only this stock trader knew about this when he developed the game but hey we practice and learn and become better with time speaking of which that trader is now a software engineer who specializes in computer vision and builds algorithms for self driving cars and systems fancy right oh by the way it's a true story thank you for watching the video folks post your questions in comments and i will see you in the next video till then take care